You might get to this issue with Bolt. When you try to select an object for one of your connections, you click on that icon, but the only thing you can see in the select game object are objects that are inside your asset folder. And you can't see the objects that are inside the scenes. And in this video, I'm gonna explain why that happens, what you have to do to be able to see the scenes objects here also, or what's the other options you have for selecting the game object that you want from the scene. So let's take a look at that. The project that I have currently open is the Keep the Tractor Going. And the last thing that I did with it was the joystick. And in the tutorial about the joystick, I was able to drag the joystick and connect it here. But some of you guys are wondering why you don't see that option in your setup. And as you can see right now, it doesn't work in my setup either. The player is not a prefab, but if we go to the inspector, I switched the source to use a macro and not an embedded. And in Bolt, whenever you use a macro, you can't have access to the scenes objects. So that is why I can't see those scenes object right now. Now in my tutorial, I used embedded instead of the macro. And at any point, you can convert a macro to an embedded by clicking this convert button, and that will convert an embedded. And now if I go to edit graph, I'll be able to drag and drop the joystick here, or I can select it from the list. So that is the setup that you need to have to be able to select it from the scene. But having an embedded graph is not always the best choice. And another thing, even if you have an embedded graph, if you create your player as a prefab, the scene objects disappear. You can see right here, only the assets. And it's because you are actually modifying the graph of the prefab. And this prefab can be used at any scene. If you go to the inspector, you can see that it's still embedded but I don't have the access to the scene variables. In fact, if you select that player, you get a warning saying that you need to add it the prefab graph instead of the graph that is on the player. So that's another setup where you won't be able to select those scenes objects. Let me unpack this prefab. I can delete the prefab now. And now I can select the game object from the scene. So in cases where you want to use a macro or you want to create a prefab out of the object, how would you go about selecting the object from a scene? One of the options that you have is using the game object find and using that you can search for the game object's name. So in my case, I can actually search for joystick. And since in my setup, I have only one joystick, it's gonna find this joystick and create the connection. So that's one way of doing it and it's gonna work. So let me create the prefab again out of it. And if I click play now, I should be able to control the joystick now. So that's one way you can do it. But what if you actually want to provide this option as a settings on the player object? For that, let's go to full screen and let's set that up for the joystick button. What we wanna do is use an object variable for this. So select the object variables and let's add a new variable. We'll call it joystick button, click add. And the type that we're looking for is a game object. And now we can use this joystick button variable inside here when we need to connect to a joystick. Let's exit full screen. And when we select a player now, there is one thing that you have to do when you're using embedded graphs. And you can see that when I select the player, the graph didn't actually update from the prefab. So for that, you need to actually go and check the overrides and make sure you click revert. That way the graph gets updated. So if I go now, the graph is updated. That's a quick note there. And now in our inspector, we can see that the variable is available inside the player right here. The type is set to null and that's what happens in Bolt when you don't select a value. It just goes back to nil. So let's select game object. And for the value, if we click now, we can see that we have the assets and the scenes objects here, or we can just drag in the joystick button here and connect it like that. Let's click play and make sure that it works. And there you go. Now the button works as well. So that's a way you can go about connecting game objects that are in your scene to your graph. Also, if you don't want to constantly go override and revert the flow, after you make updates to your prefab, you can switch from embedded to a macro. So you can do that by clicking convert. I already have a macro player, so save it as that. 
I'll overwrite it. And now in your player, let's go here and do the overwrite revert. And from now on, whenever we click edit graph, it actually edits that macro instead of editing the prefab. So if we do the changes here, it will be reflected in the prefab. And also if we go here, since we're using the same macro, it will be reflected here as well. Thanks for watching. Click on the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.